In this video, we're talking about the slope of a line, and we need to talk about what we mean when we say slope of a line. Well, the slope is basically how fast y is changing compared to how fast x is changing. How fast do I move along the y-axis compared to how fast do I move along the x-axis? Oftentimes, you'll hear it called rise over run. Rise meaning how fast do I go up? What's my change in y? Run meaning how fast do I go out along the x-axis? How fast do I go horizontally compared to vertically? vertically. So how do we define this mathematically? Well, we usually use m to define the slope. m means slope. And m is going to be equal to the change in y over the change in x. This little triangle is called delta. It's the Greek letter delta, and it's what we use to describe change. So this just means change in y over change in x. How fast is y changing compared to how fast x is changing? Well, if we look at a couple of these lines, let's look at the orange line here. We can figure it out pretty easily. We can say m is equal to, and here if we look at the orange line, let's take this point right here. At this point, x is equal to zero, right? This is along the y-axis, so that means x is equal to zero, and y is equal to negative one. So this is the point zero, negative one. At this point here, which is also on the orange line, x is one, because we're out a distance of one along the x-axis, and y is zero. Since we're right on the x-axis, y is zero. To get from this point on the line to this point on the line, how far do I have to go up along the y-axis? Well, I just have to go up one unit. I go up one unit, so my change in y is one. Since m is change in y over change in x, I put one in the numerator because my change in y is one. That gets me from this point here to the origin. Now, how do I get out to this point? Well, I have to go one unit in the positive direction of the x-axis. In other words, I have to go over one. So my change in x is gonna be positive one. So m is equal to one over one, or just one. Therefore, the slope of this line is going to be equal to 1. And I can apply that anywhere on the line. So if I start at this point, 1, 0, I want to go up to this point here. I go up one unit and over one unit, and I arrive at this point. And that'll continue to hold. Up one unit, over one unit, up one unit, over one unit. And I can go the other direction. So if I start at this point, and I want to get to this point along the line, I go down one unit and then over one unit this way. So that brings up an important point. Here's what we need to realize. We said that the slope m was equal to positive 1. That's what we simplified 1 over 1 to. We got positive 1. Well, what we need to realize is that positive 1 can be 1 over 1, positive 1 over positive 1, but it can also be negative 1 over negative 1. In other words, when I take negative 1 divided by negative 1, my negative signs cancel and I get a positive 1. So these things are all equal. What that tells me is that not only can I go in the positive direction of the y-axis one unit and the positive direction of the x-axis one unit, in other words, positive 1 over positive 1, but I can do negative 1 over negative 1. I can go down in the negative direction of the y-axis one unit and then over to the left in the negative direction of the x-axis one unit. So negative 1 negative 1 gets me to another point on the line. Now sometimes you're not going to be given a graph of the line. You're not going to be given a picture. You're only going to be given two points on the line. If that's the case, how do you find the slope? Well, let's use an example here. If we were given the point 0, negative 1 and 1, 0, we could use those to find the slope of the orange line. Because m is equal to the change in y over the change in x, and it's also equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. In other words, if we call 0, negative 1 the point x sub 1, y sub 1, and we call 1, 0, x sub 2, y sub 2, then we can just plug into our formula here. So what we would get is m is equal to y sub 2. We find the y coordinate from x sub 2, y sub 2, which is 0 right here. So we say 0 minus, and then the y value from the other coordinate point, x sub 1, y sub 1. y sub 1 is negative 1, so we get negative 1. Then we divide that by x sub 2, which is right here. We know that that's 1. And then we subtract x sub 1, which we know right here is 0. When we simplify this, 0 minus a negative 1 is the same as 0 plus 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. 0 plus 1 in our numerator is 1, so we get 1 over 1, or 1. So that's what we found earlier using just the picture of the graph, but we can also use this formula, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, if we're only given two points on the line and we don't have a picture to work with. Let's do a couple more examples really quickly. Let's look at our green line here. We have this green line. We know we have the point 0, 0 at the origin. We also have this point here, so let's just go ahead and say 0, 0. We also have this point here, 1, 2. This is 1, 
two because we're out along the x-axis one unit, up along the y-axis two units, so we're at one, two. We could say that our slope m, therefore, is two minus zero, the y-coordinates, over one minus zero, the x-coordinates. That's gonna be two over one, or just two. And I can see that that's true because I wanna go up two and over one. In other words, up two here and over one here. If we compare the orange and the green lines, what we can say is that the green line is steeper than the orange line. The change in y is two units for every change in x of one unit, versus the orange line here, the change in y is one unit for every change in x of one unit. So the green line is going up faster than the orange line is going up. So the green line is steeper. And what that tells us is that since this is equal to 2 and the slope of the orange line is equal to 1, the larger the slope is, the steeper the line. So because 2 here is greater than 1, we know that the green line is going to be steeper than the orange line. If we had a slope of 1 half, because 1 half is less than 1, the line would be more gradual. It would be less steep than the orange line. So it would be something like this, more shallow here than the orange line. What about if we look at this blue line here, this teal line? This is pointing in exactly the opposite direction. If we try to find the slope here, what we can see is we have this first point here, which is at 0, positive 1. Then we have a point over here, which is at positive 2, 0. If we use our slope formula and we take our y coordinates and subtract them from each other and we say 1 minus 0, 1 minus 0, and then we take our x coordinates and subtract them from each other and we get 0 minus 2, 0 minus 2, what we get is 1 over negative 2, which we know is equal to negative 1 half. Now this brings up a couple of important points. The first one is, and you may be wondering this, does it matter which point is x sub 1, y sub 1, and which point is x sub 2, y sub 2? And the answer is no, it doesn't matter as long as you keep it consistent. So if you use this value of y for y sub 2, then this has to be x sub 2. You can't have y sub 2 mixed with x sub 1. So you always want to start with one point and then subtract the values from the other point. So we'd have to start with 1 and do 1 minus 0 and then start with 0 and do 0 minus 2. Or we could start over here and we could say for the y values 0 minus 1 and then start over here and for the x values say 2 minus 0. It doesn't matter which way you do it, you'll get the same answer every time as long as you keep it consistent and one point is x sub 2, y sub 2, the other point is x sub 1, y sub 1. So now the second important point we realize when we calculate the slope for this teal line here is that we found a slope that was negative. The other two slopes were positive numbers and here's what this tells us. If our slope is negative then our line is going to lean to the left like this one does. If our slope is positive, our line is going to lean to the right like the green and orange lines do here. So when you see a negative slope, you know it's going to look more like this one. When you see a positive slope, you know it's going to look more like these two. And what we need to realize is just like we set up here that positive 1 was equal to positive 1 over positive 1 or negative 1 over negative 1, when we get a negative slope, we can say that that's going to be equal to a positive 1 over a negative 2 or a negative 1 over a positive 2. You can put the negative sign with the numerator or with the denominator both of them will give you that negative slope. And that's important because if we use positive one over negative two, it tells us that, let's just say we start from this point here, that we're gonna go up one in the positive direction of the y-axis, and then over two in the negative direction of the x-axis because we have a positive y and a negative x. So we go up one and over two, up one and over two, and that gets us this direction. But if we start from this point and we use negative one over positive two, then we have a negative y and a positive x. So that tells us go down one unit in the negative direction of the y-axis and then over two units in the positive direction of the x-axis. So down one over two, down one over two, and that gives us this side of our line. So you can put that negative sign in the numerator or the denominator to get you two different fractions that you can use to draw the line.